Alliance is a really, really difficult team for EG to kill. Especially if they don't get a really good start over their on, one on weakness players like Mazes. is indeed damage. That's actually a really good point that EG will have to address. Arteezy has to get damage items uh, at some point, and so will Storm, but just later on in the game, I think they can definitely get the damage they need, especially if they can set up for a black hole, like you said. It's gonna be... they're gonna have plenty of time to deal massive AoE damage, but... You know what? Universe this gives me flashbacks wall, to uh, the old... The old EG strategy, the knight strategy, do you remember that? They I had remember Sven. that. Sven was Rogue Knight, then they had Chaos Knight, Dragon Knight, Omni Knight, Omni Knight, and... Who was the There was the last knight. Holy Knight? Chen? Chen, yeah. I think. They at least had a strategy where they had four of those. And uh, it actually worked out very well. EG didn't lose with that game, that strategy for like four or five games in a row, so... 30 seconds to battle. Well, we'll see how this goes as far as uh, as far as the lanes go. Let's have a look at how EG are looking to position themselves right now. We've got PPD playing as the Wraith King Zai onto so uh, the Enigma. Storm Spirit will be played by Mason and in the mid lane, Arteezy onto his Dragon Knight and finally Universe in the top lane on Omni Knight. I think EG are expecting Alliance to do uh, to do an aggressive trialing. Yep. So they're going to put Omni Knight against that, but unfortunately for them, it's a safe the lane from Alliance, and I don't think EG's lane has a chance against that. Well, let's let's see how it all unfolds, man. There's so much on the line here. I can't believe that everything comes down to a best of one. Everything comes down to a best of one for Alliance. Everything they've done before this point, and even then, like, this only gets them into the next stage. It's, this gets them into a tiebreaker situation. They still have a chance of getting into the winner's bracket. That... Yes. <laughs> that... The, you, you look at like a grid that says nothing about it. No, and no, no. Like, okay. it, it, it does yes. because then my brain was also putting other information in. <laughs> so, yes, yes, you are right. All right. So, our lanes as far as it goes, like S4 and Arteezy get to battle it head to head in this middle lane. Arteezy gonna be really careful about this. Now he's got enough money for his bottle, which is really good for him. So we can have that come out to him already. But look at Batrider. Like Batrider is in exactly the same position here, and he's actually not even buying it straight away, which is interesting to see from S4. You, you assume he's just going to go into a bottle. I'm wondering if he, if he thinks he can get away with a really, really early blink dagger here. No, no, no. He's not going to risk it. He's just buying time with last hits, and the bottle's now coming out. Yeah, S4 is doing a great job in the mid lane. This is this is S4's most comfortable position in any game. Bad Rider in a lane that he should win. Bad Rider against a melee hero. Excellent harassment currently on Arteza okay. with five stacks. Made how, he's free farming. How is Mason meant to win this off lane? Uh, he's down here as almost a sacrificial storm spirit, which isn't a great thing. And up on top lane, the bear from Lone Druid is scouting out every single movement of PPD as well as Universe. And there's no way for this lineup to really jump and surprise Admiral Bulldog. And Admiral Bulldog is the greatest thing in the world. He pulled the camp to the side, which means he's getting the experience up and running. And once the entangled potential is there as well, Admiral Bulldog can almost turn this top lane to his advantage. You get an orb of venom over on that bear, and then just start to actually beat into the Omni Knight as well as Wraith King. Yeah, but here we go. They they swapped around. This is this is what I expected. They put Universe top, expecting Alliance to put some uh, some different lanes, and they got caught off guard. They actually put the obvious lanes, and because of that, they're gonna have to rotate Universe. Will now start running across the map. They've sent Mason top so that he can get some farm. But the problem for Mason is he's gonna be playing against a, a lone druid that's gonna be level three with Mason on level two on the storm. Yep. So in all likelihood. Lone Druid will get level 5 before Mason, and the Entangles can start kicking in, and Storm is awful at de dealing with Lone Druid in the bear. Yeah. Uh, in the lane. In yeah, the it, it, it feels really bad now. Like, they're, they're behind in levels. Like, Universe is going to take forever to get to the bottom lane. Like, you could TP down there, but I don't even think they're looking at that. Like, Zai is now doing this, I take one creep from the bottom lane and then farm up Ancients. <laughs> this, this is the only use that EG is now currently getting from their off lane, while Alliance, they're actually getting a little bit of stacks inside the jungle. EGM is taking care of that one. They're harassing RTZ out of the middle lane. Like, this DK is 7 for 0 up against a 17 for 6 Bat Rider. And when he gets close like this with Concussive Shot, as well as, like, Sicky Napalm... Oh, they're thinking about this. Flame Break gonna push it back. That could be his death right now. Three Napalm stacks. Stick out to keep him alive in S4. Too deep underneath the tower. I think this is the reason why also Universe was waiting a long time there in the middle lane for exactly that kind of moment. But he went away and now ETP back. That's 135 gold down the drain. And it's his off lane. 
down the drain. He ha he was heading down to his lane bottom, and now he had to TP mid again. So he lost a lot of time. And the problem is, I think Omni Knight, at the point he reaches level seven, he's one of the most impactful heroes in the game. It's the heal is insane. It heals 360 and deals 360 pure damage in a 240 AOE. He has a magic immunity, basically a BKB on the target that he can just cast. And his ultimate gives physic physical invulnerability. Absolutely amazing hero, but really bad at playing from behind. And he's currently level 2. He's now going to go back to base for mana and run all the way to the bottom lane. He has to get levels. That's what <laughs> this this hero, the, the only thing this hero needs is levels. He doesn't need farm. He yeah. has to get levels. Man, this is like the worst thing in the world. Look at that, uh, Mr. Courier flying right over the top of the spirit bear. Uh, should actually point out too that Admiral Bulldog has already been forced to resummon his bear once up on this top lane, but he is really forcing the issue a lot more. Like he's four and a half levels on this lone druid compared to now the current off lane of the EG, which is Universe as the Omni Knight. Now, Omni Knight's gonna come down here, and I don't know how fast he can get that repel up, but how, actually how long is the animation for that? Can Chaos Bolt connect on him if it's like almost a point blank range? before he can get Repel off. Uh, they have similar cast points, I think. So if he starts reactionary, a reactionary Repel when he sees Chaos Ball getting cast, he won't be in time, okay. if he's in melee. But with the travel time for the projectile in the air, definitely. At, at 400 or 500 range away, he can easily get a Repel off when he sees the animation start from Loda. Man, well, let's look at EGM. Like, I thought his stacking would be for somebody else, but he's farming it himself with Wisps. He's got a... Yeah, he almost got himself, like, the full triple stack again. Um, but he's up a... Level 4, coming out of the jungle. Now, obviously he's not going to keep up. Actually, he's, he's got more farm than an Enigma does. A Wisp is actually out farming an Enigma. Yeah, it's this ward from Alliance that's been crippling Sai quite a bit there in the jungle. In addition to just Enigma, moving a little bit around to the top lane, trying to put some pressure on the lone droid, but it hasn't really worked out. Admiral Bulldog now with level 5 is going to start being really <laughs> annoying. Orb of Venom. Yeah, he knows that with Orb of Venom with no health and by Tangoon. blood, yeah, PVT. <laughs> well, he's going to drop in life points, but at the same time, they're uh -oh. going to lose this bear. That's actually a long time this bear still left on cooldown, and uh, yeah, the board takes it back, so this is worth it. It's 300, go oh, come on, come on! They can't finish him! He denies it to the neutrals. He actually denies his bear to the vools, and he'll have a resummon up in a uh, resummon up in 22 seconds. That's a really big deal here for for Bulldog. It's 300 gold and a lot of experience that would have gone the way of EG, but managing to deny it like that is it's crucial. Killing a bear like that is the same as killing a hero. So he basically avoided first blood pretty much. Yeah. Oh, there's an invis rune for S4. That could actually be the action rune. Arke was watching the bottom lane, watching where the DK was moving. As DK came to look for it, man, Zai, he freaks me out when I see his bar drop that low. <laughs> he's he's soul ringing on the on the ancient area after taking a little bit of damage from it. And even Admiral Bullock, he's farming up ancients now, so he doesn't risk his uh, his freshly bear. I think he's uh, just trying to burn off a little bit more time on this bear before he puts it at risk again on the top lane, because they're really starting to get more and more damage out of Mason as well as PPD, and Mason just cracked level six. So, the Soul Ring Storm Spirit has the ability to jump a long way. And look what Universe is. He's playing Demon Dota. I, this literally is classic Jimmy. Sitting in the tree line, soaking up the experience. The former teammate of him as well. Yep. Oh, Lotus pinging. Yeah, I think he feels it, but he's waiting for EGM to come down here. Hannah Minus yeah, into the corner, Universe and he found him. Does he have any cutout? He doesn't have any way cutout. Low first, low first blood is actually on the DK in the middle lane. They used the Invis rune up. We thought that might have been the lock-in position. A classic roaming lone druid. Damn it to hell. Ganking mid. Oh well, he was farming the Ancients, so the yeah. path down there was actually pretty short. And Lasso put to use by S4, securing the first blood here Radiant's for Alliance, and they're attack. off to a really good start. Loda has completely uninterrupted farm now, currently 47 CS. Second on the board is their mid laner on the Batrider. And Arteezy has just been shut down very hard by this Batrider so far this game. S4 has been dominating mid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna, it's gonna continue, it's gonna continue more now. Like a first blood up against a DK, first time he gets into dragon form, the fortification just comes up, and RK is just nuking down the creep wave. It's trying to push DK away from the town so the poison can't keep keep, keep ticking it down. This is now Alliance with a one game advantage. They got a CK who's farming his ass off now with Hand Myers as well, so he's good. And EGM is half a level away from having relocate ready. So with all of these things put together, you've basically got like a
Lions with great killing potential. The bling deck is not far off. They're gonna go for us easy. Concussive shot. He dragon tells on S4, but Loader, he TP's himself in so he can drag RTZ back. Second death within the space of one minute. And the rotation. Now she may even get some more. The Hellfire Blast goes off on the bear. So Admiral Bulldog trying to get himself to a point where he can entangle over on PPD. Has to recall the bear up, but the bear's got a higher movement speed than PPD. First hit couldn't get the entangle. Arteezy did manage to get three quarters of that tower though, so I guess maybe worth dying for considering how far behind he is already. His, his main goal right now is to get them some sort of map control here by, by taking down the buildings and... We'll now TP down to bottom to get some much needed farm of course. As mentioned he is far behind, but he, he can come back on the Dragon Knight in this game for sure. The problem is he's running down into a lane that already has a Chaos Knight in it now and will be pretty hard pressed to do anything down here. EGM, three experience away from level six on IO. Nine minutes in, it's a good timing. Actually, even 26 CS on him. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. His eyes up on this top lane with one creepy go down in front of him. He'll actually crack his level six on the way in here. And in fact, there it is. So they're gonna force the top lane with a black hole now available for uh, for EG. Battle pull was gonna pull the aggro off, off the lane. Actually, was he transferring over? Okay, just some healing. But where is he going? He's actually taking the conversion army and the creep wave down the river. So it wastes the timing of this of these conversions. Still gonna be doing some damage to the tower, but there's no creep wave helping out, so Bulldog is just yeah, his bear is just standing there. I'm waiting for your bear to actually take the creep wave towards the mid lane. Let S4 get double farm. <laughs> Because he, he's sitting there looking for a blink dagger with a double creep wave. If you fire fly it up, you'd actually have that money. Uh, he has it in he has it in a moment anyway. Okay, I don't think Admiral Bulldog's ready. He wants it himself. I think it's better to give it to Bulldog as well. They want to make sure that the lone druid gets to a place in this game where he starts putting a lot of pressure in. S4 already is winning by a lot. I think having six CS per minute at ten minutes for Bat Rider is exceptionally good, even for a mid lane bat. That's Phenomenal. Loda is slightly ahead. That that speaks for that speaks for itself, right? Yeah. Loda is eight CS ahead on a safe lane free farming Chaos Knight. The mid bat rider. <laughs> Look at EG's maneuver. It's like a five man down mid, boys. Five man down mid. Zai will be our bait. This he is how you put Omni Knight to use. He's level five, level two, repel level three on the heal. This tower is gone. Yeah. The Alliance won't try to fight for it. They'll go and try to get a trade bottom. But I think EG could try to brute force down for the tier two. Make use of their lineup right now. Put some pressure. Oh, we got a jump. The Firefly just wore off too, he pulled the Fling Dagger expecting death, Mason almost getting completely destroyed there by RK, but S4 will go down after the jump, but the trade-off is still towers. like Loader has popped Phantasm. Oh, he got lucky, he got the extra illusion. So he's gonna actually have three of himself to attack that tier one tower, and EGM can just keep playing it, but like buffing him up as well. Oh, the one range creep got the tower! Oh, Loader. That's gotta suck. That's quite a bit of money down the drain. And meanwhile, EG taking a tier two. EG easily ahead on this trade. Now Alliance will try to put some pressure top here with the lone droid, but Bulldog gets scared and backs off. TP support coming down here from EG. Wow. He's gonna crack level six. That creep on the bottom lane. EG just managed to claim a lot there. But look what S4 is doing in the meantime. Like he did buy that blink dagger. He's coming in and now he'll spot Die and PPD. And as she goes on PPD of all people, relocates on the way in. So now they're going to also bring Loda towards the battle. So PPD, no level 6 yet. He's just short, so there's no hang to worry about from him. And Zai, silence, nuke down, flame break as well. They pick up two inside the jungle. And now Admiral Bulldog can finish that T1 tower on the top lane. EG may have claimed something. Alliance take it straight back with interest. Loda is getting so big in this game. His farm is is pretty amazing. 6k net worth. He has a Dyer's GPM of wait, what's what's his GPM? Am I miscalculating? No, I'm not. He's got 500 12. GPM at 12 minutes. On a hero like Chaos Knight, that is phenomenal. They have the top three on the net worth charts alliance, with Batrider in second place. This Loda. game is looking good. They're keeping their hopes alive to get to the playoffs here. I'm surprised Loda got drums in this one. I was I was considering like considering the amount of money he had, he could have gone straight into an armlet. But this kind of lineup. But I suppose a little bit more survivability and chase is going to be good for them. In case that Omnite really does cause them some problems. And now we get a Maelstrom over on the bear. We're not looking at a, at a Radiance Lone Druid this time around. He might get it next. This is a build-up that Admiral Bulldog goes for a lot because... Maelstrom increases his farming speed by a lot and if, if he doesn't go for the Midas, this is a... Yeah, it's, it's the same logic. You farm a lot faster. Sure, you don't get the bonus XP from the Midas, but Lone Druid... Might not actually need it this game. It's more about just getting some some pressure out from the bear. EG's going to be tagging out this damage a hell of a lot. The Medallion of Courage is flying in for PPD. 
which will make this a little bit easier. In fact, they got bottles, they got medallions, in fact, the medallion. Turn the medallion around, please. There goes your flame break. <sighs> Luckily, no one put up on the hill there. I say lucky for EG, but S4 fire flying himself around the edge of the pit. So they can perfectly see this one. He's actually triggered the infus rune as well. I don't think he got detection for this. Now, Lone Drew is there sitting on the edge. He fireflies himself and it sits on top. Thorsgren picks up the eggs. Was killed by the Dire, and then your black hole from Zai catching S4 in here. And maybe they get a little bit more with that Lone Drew bear down. So they actually get themselves a kill on the Bat Rider. They claim the Roshan with the Aegis. And uh, they got one. Middle tower is under attack. Fighting into Omni Knight is so, so, so difficult. If you, you don't. You saw what he wanted to do then. Like, he knew they didn't have detection. All he wanted to do was just come in there, pick up the Aegis, and then Firefly himself out. There's only one way for Alliance to take that fight, and that is in your face. Lasso the Omni and stun the Enigma. There's, I cannot imagine any other way that they could win that fight. Like, if Omni Knight doesn't get stunned or jumped on, he ulties and everyone stays alive. And at the same time, Enigma with a very easy black hole, the Repel was on the Storm Spirit, so S4 couldn't go on Mason, and EG just claimed Roshan and probably a tier 1 tower bottom. The trade off could happen here in mid, Bulldog is starting to put some pressure here, and the rotation's coming in from the trade off's also on top lane. Like, Loder's is getting free farm up here, and he's building into what I now assume is his S and Y. Because Loder, Loder is still one of the very few players that subscribes to this type of build. They're moving everybody up. Like, I think S4 is also searching for any kind of kill. If someone comes near him, they'll just take him. So they take they take uh, EG's jungle alliance here, and they'll search for one person. They got one that's in pretty close, but there's no aggressive observer wards. Dyer's Repel on Mason. Oh, so he has a region as well. He's going to jump on Loader. But Admiral Bulldog, he sends the bear in. There's extra TP, and he focuses EGM at the very, very start. But S4 jumps in. The last who's over on Universe. The bear's oh. focus. Oh. ultimate coming out from Skyrath Mage. Mason goes down. The Aegis is gone. Racing is burning in the Firefly. And the bear continues to fight PPD. Backing himself up. Mason, a jump out again. The low drop bear is on the sideline. No reason to bubble here for Admiral Bulldog. RK, low on life. Mason just bouncing from one to the next. And the rest of Alliance trying to bail out of here. RT is so low on life. Loader turns back into this one. He has a little bit of chaos ball. Still 10 stick charges. Now he looks for an opening. The mech charge keeping EG fighting on these front lines. And the drum charge triggering here from Loader. They still want out. Mason cutting his way through the tree line. It's for Flame Break. PPD about to die, but they don't want to die in front of him because the ankle really slow him down. It's for off to the sidelines. Being chased. Still with the Firefly. Mason out of mana. He cannot chase us any further. And the Lone Draw Bear is looking for the pickoff over on PPD. But the rest of Alliance is a little bit too far away for the Bear to attack. And they will back themselves up. 5-3, to three, EG, successful defense. Loda really wanted to turn and fight there, but he realized he was taking too much damage. Even with the overcharge from EGM on, on IO, he could... It was still a... Uh... Technically almost a one on four he was running into, so he had to get out of there immediately, but Alliance, they still managed to claim the Aegis, uh, or yeah, kill the hero with the Aegis. They almost take the tower. I believe they got a kill on the Omni Knight. So took advantage of the fact that Enigma's Black Hole was on cooldown after that Roshan fight, and at least managed to get some sort of, of trade-off overall here. And now Loda, back to farming the bottom lane, has a Sanj. We'll see if it's Sanj and Yasha, or uh, eventually gonna be a Halberd here. Mm. I'm surprised he doesn't go for an armlet in this game. He, I think he had so good farm, and agreed. it's so good with Phantasm. I actually got a feeling that it's gonna be SMY and armlet. Uh, he might go for the halberd just because he'll look at Arteezy and realize Arteezy is actually gonna go in for a Maelstrom. But what if he went armlet heart? Like, what's what's gonna stop the Chaos Knight at that point? The Nothing. AoE damage from, from EG is insufficient. Yep. I'm, I'm a little surprised that Loda doesn't do that, or alternatively get a BKB now so that you can just play Radiance freely around the fight and pull your illusions around with you. We're gonna see EG taking a top tier one here, taking a lot of damage from the Firefly as well as the... Uh, it's, it's all just for the trade-up though. The tier two tower is being beaten down by Loda. Did he just get luck? No, he didn't get lucky again. It's level two Phantasm up. So he's got more of himself, but the fortification will slow down Alliance and there's gonna be a TP coming in towards mid lane. But they decided they decide to focus one, and now, well, actually, that, that TP Dyer's very wisely cancelled. Because Loader and EGM would have killed off whoever finished that TP. Yeah, there was no way that was going to work out for Zai, so... Obviously had to cancel that one out. Alliance take a trade. Tier 2 for Tier 1, I guess they're going to be happy with Loder that. The mid-Tier 1, however, fat, still man. standing. Yeah, Loader is just... so fat. He's 8.7k net worth to the 6.8k of Mason. And now, PPD. Well, that's a nice invis room for him. There's no detection here for uh, for Alliance, so we can walk freely invis. 
He's gonna prep for somebody else. Oh, Universe is oh, coming over. GM is in a lot of trouble now. Look at this. Relocate, Relocating. Though. Perfect timing. Hellfire Blast. Oh. Yes, he evades it. They come in. They kill off Arteezy. And the Hellfire Blast went, which means EGM knows it. Look, they're bringing Loader back over. Just in case. That relocate. The gank on Arteezy in the middle lane couldn't have come at a better time for Alliance. They evade the Invis gank. I actually had the colors me messed up there. I think it didn't make a difference. Because the hero I was looking for to jump on the Wraith King stun was, was Mason on the Storm, but he wasn't there. It was the Omni Knight who was there. So. Yeah. I think Wraith King actually didn't even want to stun there. He was just scouting because that stun wouldn't have had any impact. I, they would have still relocated in after he got stunned, right? It doesn't break it. I, I still don't have, have the understanding of what exactly breaks relocate and what doesn't. It's, uh, there's a couple of things out there that still do it. Yeah, it's a little confusing sometimes, I think. Or maybe I'm just stupid. It's probably me being stupid. But... Hey man, you have more mechanic It's not a hero I play. You have more mechanic knowledge that. than I do, so... <laughs> I probably. On I IO, on IO will on probably it. even do it. I, I don't know anything about that hero. <laughs> I really don't enjoy playing that hero. Okay, Lotus at a point now where he can buy his halberd. The sacrifice is buyback, but I think at this point in the game it wouldn't really matter. Um, but he's not at the point where he can buy his SMY. He needs to wait a little bit longer and get Dyer's that Hanamai's trigger again before they can do denied. such a thing. And uh, Top Tower is getting denied up by Arteezy. What do you think about Arteezy not going in for a BKB in this lineup and instead going to go for a Maelstrom? Fan? Not fan? I think I'm a fan. Fan, because... of, fan, fan of Zai dying? Malifus done? He's kind of got to use it. The last he's going to go. And there you go. The nuke. They even relocate in loader as well as EGM for that one. We're smashing to the last hit too. I'm a fan of Mjolnir in this game. They need something more to deal with the Chaos Knight illusions. And I think that's Arteezy's reasoning here. They need the Mjolnir. If he gets a BKB, yes, it's good. But at the same time, they already have Repel. If they want to keep him safe, and then he can get the Mjolnir and actually deal with uh, with Loda, who will be Loda. the biggest threat. They're coming to kill Loda. There's three heroes moving from EG down, but they all walk past the Observer Ward, which is just a little bit further up here in the river. But because of that right now, like, Alliance, they just back themselves up, and this is wasted for Universe, Mason, and PPD. What is Omnus like, Omnus got Tranquils and Soul Ring, dude. I, I assume this might be either Four Staff or Blink Dagger. I think Blink is a great choice. This, at this point, it's all about getting into the fight and using your ulti and repel. And he can't start in the middle of the fight because then he gets jumped by S4, S4 and just gets killed. Blinks himself away, but he can still see PPD just sitting on the edge. And you'll also notice the fact that he dropped the Observer Ward down. At the same time, S4 has got a, a uh, four star flown into himself. And EG, they'll be looking to take the bottom tier two now. They're in a great position if Omni Knight stays back here. They can repel up Arteezy or Mason and go for a, go for a dive. It's taking too long. They could even repel Enigma and get a guaranteed black hole that can only get countered by Lasso, but that's really hard. Yeah, they're going to TP mid to try and defend, but I think PvD is going to be too late. They need to just deny the tower. Ah, oh, Lone Druid got it. That's actually his relic. He's, if he can get this bear out of here safely, like he's got the relic anyway, but he wants to get the bear out. Bottom lane, there's a wisp relocate coming in. Whoa! Oh, he's what? alone! Um, um, EGM, have friends! Lori <laughs> was just like, dude, you're not taking me with you. Maybe they actually deliberately decided. The moment they cast the relocate, they were like, this is an awful idea, go alone. <laughs> yeah. Don't bring me into my death, <laughs> says Loda. Lo <laughs> hey man, Loda's been actually having a really damn good game this game. Like, let's let's not let's not see game of feed. Loader is two zero two. You don't want to leave him. You don't want to let that CK die. And CK, he's got three point seven K gold. I got a funny feeling. This is just a casual sunge. He's it gonna has go to straight. Be hot. He's gonna go straight. Well, well, hard or BKB. I still think hard is the better choice. It's hard. Yeah. Loader's picked up a Reva. How tanky is this CK? How tanky you're all the CKs. How many has the heart? I think uh, Alliance could be in a position where they can start pressuring the base even. And they'll probably look to secure Roshan first, who will be spawning up in about, let's see, what's that? A minute and one and a third minute time, which Alliance obviously don't know, but they'll be looking for it soon. Yeah. The Radiance, the timing on Alliance's items is perfect here. They will ha have Radiance. Heart's arrive just after Radiance. Heart and Radiance at the same time, you take Rosh, you go and end the game. It's actually doable for Alliance here. I don't think EG managed to accomplish enough early on with their draft. I really liked it, but it crippled them a lot the way they put the lanes initially. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, the amount of pressure that was on the mid lane where Universe felt like he had to help out, they lost out so much on other lanes that... EG just haven't found enough. They've done a great job at taking towers. They've actually taken five towers, which is something that our lineup is really good at, but yeah. the kills in the farm just hasn't followed with it enough to put them in a good enough position here. They're only 3,000 gold behind, though. 5,000 experience. It's definitely manageable, but as you pointed out, 
come mid late game, do they have the damage to actually kill the heroes? It's it's really difficult, man. Like there's one big upside effect because there's no BKB. Mason's orc is gonna be a lot more effective on on all of these heroes from Alliance. So he might be out of. But then again, who's you be focusing? Like you focus on Lotus. Like yeah, I'm gonna orc at this guy. Then all of a sudden, EGM sitting there in the back lines going, well, I'll I got you, man. Like. <laughs> He's, he's kind of going to focus on something else. Lone Druid's bear is currently, well, dying inside the Roche pit. And this is only like five seconds before Roshan is going to spawn up. And that's actually a really bad thing for Lone Druid. He just resummoned, so he doesn't have another bear summon for two minutes from now. Yeah, but EG can't focus the bear in the fights. That's the problem. There's going to be too many other issues for them. So having one bear now for Bulldog is actually enough as long as the other... As long as his team is with him in the fight, they're going to be just fine. Now PPD is going to Roche see the up. fact that Roche is up. We'll see if EG are <laughs> going to try to collapse on that. S Force is coming in too, and he's going to yeah, ally his own as well. And they'll see Mason starting the attack. But it completely, fire. yeah, look, look at him just clean up this entire area here. Making a devil's pitchfork, just facing the way of the Roche pit. And EG, like EG will look to fight before they take Roche up. I like the the pressure from EG here that they're actually trying to force something to happen around the Roche instead of just trying to split push and not having oh, anything. Oh, oh! Mason! He went all the way up just then. There's still no entangled hip. He's gonna get a kill straight out there. Four. Very, oh, very they aggressive. Get this bear, but I don't think they can. They have to get the hell out of there. They're actually, enough damage, man. Lotus Illusions are doing a lot of damage, but Phantasm used. Yep. They got like nothing out of that. Really surprising. But this, at this the same time, right when now. Storm when Storm jumps bat like that and bat get bat gets taken out, Alliance lose their initiation power, and if they choose to commit to that fight, Guardian Angel. Yep. A counter to Omni Knight is dead. He can self repel and guarantee a uh, Guardian Angel. And there's the the Mjolnir. Coming out. Oh. On RTZ. And they're gonna they're gonna have him backed up right now, like RTZ got that slot available with no money for buyback and he's still zero three on RTZ. <laughs> this is the guy who like somehow has power during fights and fights from behind. Uh, but this Roshan, actually they're gonna give the Aegis give one over to Mason instead. And Mason's also getting very, very oh, he's got a regen rune as well to boot. Nice. Uh, but he's almost got a Lincoln Sphere, which means Chaos Bolt. A lot of actually the abilities of Alliance, like they're gonna have a real hard time latching that Storm Spirit. I actually lost his region here to the Centaur. I don't think Oops. he expected that. There's the heart. Loader will get 16 as well in a moment. Like if Alliance get the fight on their terms, they're gonna absolutely stomp EG. I have no doubt in my oh, mind. Oh, the trouble! About it right now. They found S4 Relocate. again. Silence. The relocate's gonna come in through the rear at the moment. Who do they go on? It's PPD, but remember, it's only the Yank. Four point, uh, four seconds on that stun as EGM backing himself away. The only has gone on from Universe to PPD entangled, and they're gonna drop him again. Zai is coming in for PPD. Gets his one charges off with the mech from Zai, keeping him alive. Now Loader the black hole, dragging him back into the tree line here. Universe trying to get in close, and Loader. He's stuck in the trees. EGM trying to pull him out at the moment. Admiral Bulldog still managed to bring down the Raid King. One last time. It's actually three seconds over on Universe, but Loader turned back in just to die straight away. And EGM has to tether himself away after getting stunned up. That damage from oh, Arteezy. EGM still has one charges up his sleeve, so that's the reason why he's still alive. But Loader really turned back in for that last stun for no gain. Guardian Angel, man. Won that fight alone. Mm hmm. Absolutely won that fight. The repel on Storm Spirit. The thing is, Mason can item build like this against a lineup that should generally be countering him fairly well. The Silence from Skywrath counters him, the Lasso counters him, Chaos Bolt. Repel, jump in, Orchid, kill a target. The follow up is Alliance will try to turn around and fight because they have a lot of fight in them. They Even if they lose any of their heroes, they can actually still turn and easily put a fight up. But with Guardian Angel available and EG with already tanky heroes with a repelled storm, a Wraith King with two lives, and a Dragon Knight, Loda cannot do it like this. They have to get Omni first. Yes. That's what I mean when I'm saying but if they, Alliance they get the fight S4 on their terms. Yeah. Every single time, EG is be the one initiating and taking out S4. If Alliance get it on their terms, if they jump the Omni Knight and kill him off, EG better get the hell out of there quick or they're uh -huh. gonna lose the entire team. But Universe's positioning has been absolutely great. He's died once in this game so far, it's a 30 minute game. And it's not an easy game to play Omni Knight in by any means. There's a Bat Rider with Lasso, Silence from Skyrath, Stun from Loda. The bear can chase you away and put pressure on you. Yep. He's just keeping his cool. And Blink Tank has also appeared on the Enigma too, so EG's got another thing which can just catch a line completely out of off guard. But a lot of at least have one nice thing that's working for them. They have every outer tower apart from the T2 tower in the middle down, 
and the Radiance Burning Bear is going to be able to do an easy split push. Like, S4 is the one giving the momentum up on the top lane at the moment, but once Lone Druid feels a little bit more comfortable with his bear, he could just put it out into the lane, and then EG always have to be looking behind themselves. Now, Storm Spirit can obviously go and gank up the bear, but they don't have a great split push power here, EG. So that's one thing which uh, we have to keep in mind. Alliance, they are really a team that knows how to split push. We have to always bear that in mind. And CK continues to farm up as well. He's going to get stronger and stronger as time goes by. And also once that mech is finally done, like, we're still looking at what's going to be a 32 minute mech for Alliance because EGM is still 300 gold away from that. It's taken way too long. Art Loader or EGM? They want to be out here. Like, they see Arteezy up on the top lane, but there's still four big heroes in that bottom. Split pushing could definitely be an Where approach that Alliance Where could take. Going? Oh boy. Initiation from Zai. Yep. And the follow up really as well. Will they really, really get him out? Dragging him out. Well, this is a dead IO. Yep. That's for sure. <laughs> ET are just going to cluster up around him. Actually, Oops. I guess they're just scouting really quickly whether Alliance are going to bring in more people, but... There, there's no one coming, man. Easy successful gank here for EG. They didn't get what they wanted to go for, but at least they got a kill. And we'll be buying some more time. They'll be getting some more farm and starting to pressure out the lanes a little they bit more. They crack top lane, lane here. Like, there's a blink lasso above. This is confident from Arteezy. He knows Lasso's there. Let's push it, go He's gonna it. die! Yep, blink, Lasso, Skyrath, drop the hammer, right on Arteezy, seal him up. Admiral Bulldog brings the bear in as well. And this is now well worth the trade. That's the DK going down. And all you lost was like, you whispered a relocate. Mason, he burnt every bit of mana he had to jump out here. He's got nothing left in the tank to, to fight with. Arteezy pretty much should have seen that gank coming. Yep. Alliance, they knew they weren't bottom because they had just been ganking CK Wisp down there. And with Batrider having been in the top lane for that long, and both the Skyrath and Lone Druid going missing on the map, they were definitely going to run and snipe him off. So Arteezy getting caught off guard here, he's now up to four deaths. But looking at the Golden Experience graph, EG has pulled the game back entirely. They're actually leading by, would you believe it, 330 gold. That's huge! That's not. It's actually huge that they pulled it back, to be honest. Yeah, it is. Considering how well it was looking for Alliance and what they had accomplished, so he just done a great job. Time. I've seen this story before, but Four not staff. enough mana. Four star for Batrider really working overtime for him. Uh, EGM, like, hang on, did he just not... Oh, obviously because he died. Like, this mech again has been delayed. But Chaos Knight's getting fatter and fatter as still time goes by, man. And I still have the question. Where's your physical DBS coming from? It's not going to come from Mason. Mason's all about, like, your burst damage. And your DK, like, he got me on you. That's great for Arteezy. But it's not enough to deal with the strength which is currently there for the CK. Or even for, like, the Lone Druid. Like, what happens once this bear is able to pick up an AC? These are two guys trying to bring down a bear together with the DD rune as well on the Enigma. Okay, PBD will come in. Three heroes to kill off a bear. Bottom lane, Loader, initiated on by Mason. He's still got the Aegis Simulator, so Loader doesn't really want to properly kill him off here. And Universe will just repel him. Obviously, the physical DPS here of Loader is still going to trigger out that Aegis. Nice timing by Mason. Yeah, one second before the Aegis, Aegis was expiring in three seconds. And he basically, he just wanted to die. He just wanted to use his mana. Perfectly timed by EG. Loader could have actually made a really big play there by not killing him. If, if he, he waited half a second. Chase, and wait two more seconds, but... See, it's not easy. They're gonna go again. Dragon Tail Sun will be there and die. Oh, oh the Black the Hole! He's got three. Arteezy on the edge of the splash damage. Alliance, they put themselves into their own grave. Four stuff up. RK couldn't breach the tree line. He's got no TP available, no ultimate available. Zai will find him in the corner. And four heroes for Alliance will be lost on the top lane. Do you remember you said where's the damage gonna come from? Midnight Pulse. Oh yeah. Kind of forget about right how much, there. how many life points you've got as a CK. How's Midnight Pulse work? Hell yeah. What an absolute sick play by EG. Perfectly baited out by our teaser. The follow up from Sai on the money. And EG, they were looking, it was looking grim for them. But with every passing minute, it just looks like they're taking control of this game. Alliance are not finding any sort of split push or any sort of team fight on their terms. Mm -hmm. It's all about EG's execution at this point, I feel. They're just flat out outplaying Alliance for the last 5 to 10 minutes. Yeah. And this tower is gone. Loda could buy back, but he really doesn't want to do that. No, he needs his money. He really needs to find his, ne his next part. Oh, they his might, next they might actually let it go. 10 seconds until Loda's back. They don't have Black Hole. But it's safe now. Arteezy picking up the BKB and Mason. Mason's getting so big, man. Yeah. Storm Spirit with Bloodstone Orchid, soon to be a Lincoln Sphere, because he doesn't... There's no Diffusal coming up on Alliance. They have no one building it, so he... He doesn't need to care about... Or he doesn't need to get a BKB. Technically, they could break his Lincolns with something and then Diffusal 
the um, diffuse of the repel afterwards, but even then, actually, they don't have really good tools for doing that, so... He doesn't need to build the BKB. It's a huge advantage for Storm to be able to not build that item, because when you think about it, it's actually really bad for him stat-wise. Mm -hmm. The amount of gold you invest compared to the potential of the hero, it's a strictly... You know, it's it's a hybrid defensive and offensive item. You can go aggressive because you have it, but there you could go so much more aggressive with pretty much any other good damage item on a Storm Spirit. So, getting a lot out of the repel in this game so far, Mason. We've got movement coming out And he's caught up on farm with Loda. Would you believe it? <laughs> Loda was so far ahead. That's also a guy who's running ahead of Midas as well, up against your Storm Spirit, who's not. But when Mason, actually, Mason only got, still only got three for zero. Like as far as like kill count goes for this game, it's really not that high. A lot more of this comes just down to dis, uh, positioning and who's able to get that initial pick off, because that gives you the advantage in the fight. And EG just Might be finding no, they didn't up. find Universe. And now EG are going to blink down towards the bottom lane. Nothing to be claimed right now. Roshan has not respawned yet. They got a pretty slow respawn here. We need to wait about another one and a half minutes before that the, happens. So they're the just like, whatever. Like the warding which we'll is inside their own jungle again. They're watching where CK as well as Whisper. They've actually around. managed to cover. Like, look at this. They've managed to place three wards across the entirety of the map, actually. So really great warding coming out from EG. Keeping tab. Down one. S4. S4. Get out Four stuff up. The Orc is already gone, and Mason will keep with him. And that's the death of the Batrider. 50 seconds on the sidelines. And there is a buyback available for him. EGM and Loda have to push out this top lane as quickly as they possibly can because EG's coming down mid and Black Hole's off cooldown in 9 seconds time. EG's ready to fight, and they will. RTZ uh, popping the Elder Dragon form will start dealing damage to the tower. There is no glyph for Alliance. Already a the bear. There's the buyback. Yep, they had to do it right now. There is still a resum available on the bear. Flame Breaker making this easy for him, but the bear's on the sidelines. The top lane is being pushed in. They're going for a trade-off. And Loda, he's got four of himself beaten down this tier 3 tower. Alliance are actually getting the better trade here. If they bring down the range racks as well, like the mid fight can continue all at once. Storm Spirit's going to jump up and this big TP is coming back. But they've already taken the racks. EGM, get him out of there. Get Loda back to safety and they do so. They relocate out. They've taken tier 3 and range racks. And EG is zipping there, scratching their heads going, why? They're gonna get a kill on, on EGM, but this is small. This is like getting a box of chocolates after being on Wheel of Fortune. It's not what you wanted to take home. And they actually didn't even use the glyph and all of that. I don't know if they forgot they had it, or if they thought it wasn't gonna help them out, but... Really surprised from EG. I think that glyph could have bought them the range barracks. But I, I don't think the damage. I, I really don't think EG thought the damage was high enough coming out from those, um, from the CK Phantasm. Um, I th <laughs> like, you just look at him there. It's like CK, like, he, he put one hit himself into EGR that. EG are a clever and experienced team. If they don't think Phantasm <laughs> hits hard, they need to go back to Dota school. Well, man, they didn't use Glyph, so what else are you going to come I'm up with? I'm not sure. Well, EG's now going to go have a crack at Roshan. Remember, they've still got all their big team fight abilities. There's your SMY coming out from Loda. Three point, almost 2k life points on this guy. Not to mention the main and he's building a Manta style. Like, wait, what? Okay, he built the Manta. He got, but they got the Manta style recipe now. He's just laid it out. It's like, like you, you're Mr. Pull. You shoot, you call the pocket before you start. He's a long way off having that though. Yeah, and another Roche goes down. EG. Mason will be getting the Aegis. Cheese will, in all likelihood, go to Arteezy. But they're gonna grab it on Zai for now. I think he's just being a courier right now. Running up to the Dragon Knight here. And this is so tense. The winner of this game oh, actually gets easy. a lot out of the victory. Oh, yeah. Like, EG, if EG, if they win, they go straight through to Key Arena. S4's dead. S4 is so totally dead. Caught in the corner by Mason. S4's gonna feel shit about this storm this game. He's gonna hate Mason after this, Ooh. no matter whether they win or lose. EGM. Mason has just ruined his game. Get out of there! Now the Mustard is not helping him. He's gonna TP. He's getting the close to Arteezy. You leave that was an Elder Dragon, Dragon form. form used. Yeah, that's a pretty big ultimate to to get on cooldown here. So yeah. Alliance at least accomplished that. But Mason, amazing Storm Spirit the whole game. Sick performance from him. He's been doing everything right. He even started in the off lane if you remember. Mm -hmm. You you can't tell. You really can't tell in this They're game. They're coming up mid again. Fortification this time though for Alliance will be available. A just concussive shot. They're trying to slow down Mason. And Mason trying to soak up as much as they got. Like repelled up on him too. Loader wants to initiate and hold him back. They've got to use fortification. Just look, look at the bottom lane again. Like tower. Okay, fortification. Okay, maybe teams just don't like doing it. Um, but Admiral Bulldog. You're not going to make the same mistake. If they bought a little bit of time, yeah, they're coming back. They're coming back straight away. But Admiral Bulldog, if they use fortification, they may have been able to hold on to that T1 tower in the mid just a little bit longer. 
And now refresher, oh, we got double black. Oh. Item. Loader now with a Manta style. Did he finish the full thing? Where the hell was it sitting? I was looking here, 2,000 gold, and he bought the recipe for it. I didn't see him anywhere near a Yasha. Not sure? Just keeping it on the ground. Did he have the same to Yasha for a bit and then disassemble that? Or Yeah, actually, that's exactly okay. it. He actually had an yeah, SMI. So I that's fine. forgot yeah. he was doing that. Yeah, now I'll explain why he bought the recipe. Yeah. Well, Loda has a lot of illusions. It all comes down to can he get the fight and or the base. Can they? I, I think it comes out of something bigger. Can S4 not get caught out? It's, it, it's, happened, it's an absolute nightmare for it's, S4. It's happened game. like five times during the battles. Like it's... It keeps happening, and Mason keeps focusing him. Speaking of the already, devil! And they're jumping into the T4 towers. They need help to come in here, and in comes EGM, keeping S4 alive. Three seconds on the son of Mason, the repel will help him break, break free. But they come back over to the melee rack. Now, fortification is still available, and load up, he's pushing top lane. He needs it's actually to Bulldog. His Bulldog, sorry, I take it back. He's pushing top lane, and Bulldog's actually going to return. He's got the TP gone, there goes the fortification. Bulldog may just consider this like a full on trade. Like, they lose their melee racks, they still don't want to fight into double black hole. They're going bottom. Oh, Lift they're is available. Relocating. Where's your black hole? There it is, EGM. He's, He's got gonna five kill seconds. He's going to relocate him back in again. The tower's still going to go down, and they're at home and home. Well, up on top lane, Admiral Bulldog, he's taking the melee racks. Alliance get the advantage in S4. He's on the back of Arteezy. If he can last through Arteezy right now, he's trying to turn a fight with Arteezy. He is the Lone Ranger. S4, there's your last two. Loader comes in, needs some Chris, needs some damage. And S4 needs to get further away. EGM, same as well. Buffing up Loader. There's a Dragon Telson as well. But the BKB will wear off. The Flame Break bouncing around. There's a catch up. Mason flies from the corner of the screen. Universe will come in too. RK drops the over. Minimal to no damage there on Arteezy. Loader, low on life. Refresher off. is still there if he wants to use another black hole. But Loader, he'll go down right now. Two no years to the sidelines. It is not buyback. Oh. Oh. 436 end gold the game score. right now. I can't believe Loda doesn't have a rebuy right now. And there's That's still Angus on Mason. Lanes. They could force this so easy. Look at him. They're going, are they going for T4 towers or they're going for bottom? They're going for the tier 3 tower on bottom lane EG. This is really freaking critical now. 50 seconds without the CK. How much damage can EG deal? They're easily taking this lane. They cannot get Megas this time around. The tier 2 tower still up. They're Mason. relocating Bulldog to the bottom lane. We'll be taking the range barracks here, Alliance. <laughs> Doing what they can. They Are they going to leave Bulldog? Change. They might leave Bulldog here. Look at the damage. Yep, they will. Let, let him finish the job and let him battle up against PPD. This is actually split racks that have been taken. Entangle on PPD. He's actually really low on life here. Meanwhile, back inside the base, 20 seconds until CK's back up again. A jump away. They need to seal up Mason. He's still got the Aegis team more than 14 one charges but the melee racks on bottom lane does go down. Bulldog is away to safety, but it is two racks against both of these teams, and maybe now six seconds until CK is up. RK, too close, four staffs away. S4, he's took his own four staff available too, thinking about a firefighter blink lasso. He needs a target, but can't find one. And maybe he can. He's right behind it. Zai, still refresher orb available for his black hole if he really needs to do it. But Admiral Bulldog coming in through the back end. The bear looking for an entangle. He's got Zai. He's got Mason. He's got a first hit entangle on Zai. And then a bash. going to bash it straight after. And another one. Give me out, Zai. Man, <laughs> Ice Frog hates Zai right now. Okay. He is going to done by the random generator. And now ET, they have no enigma. He actually can buy back, but they don't want to force this. AC is up. And EG actually have split racks against them while they hold mid and bottom racks. What kind of game is this? I kind of have that feeling that sometimes Bulldog actually presses a button and decides whether he wants an <laughs> entangle or a bash. And sometimes he's just having a little bit of fun. If the game is going fine, oh, I don't need the entangle right now. Okay, now I want it. He just decides it. Oh my goodness. I actually don't think it mattered there. I'm pretty sure Zai was dead no matter oh, what. Oh, nice so. jump. Mason caught Zai. Uh, Mason caught EG. I'm sorry. He was just TPing out the bottom lane. Good pick off. He's almost got Scythe of Ice. Oh, he's building into a Scythe of Ice six. This I'm is one of the best Storm's Root performances I've seen in a long time. Mason is playing an incredible game and yeah. really showcasing how you can use Omni Knight together with Storm's Root. And in this kind of lineup, EG were behind in the beginning. They were playing against a lineup that's tailored to push towers and end the game in the mid game. And they've managed to keep taking good fights off the back of the Storm's Root and Omni Knight combination and just find a lot of ganks, turning them into. And now we're just down to one lane of Paris for each team. I don't the, know. The, this cri is... the critical thing for both these teams, I mean, especially just for Alliance, watching man. this, just watching this is so tense. Like playing. <laughs> EG have less to lose than Alliance, but being Alliance right now, one misplay 
and cost you your entire and th this isn't even if they win this you know it just gets them into a tiebreaker <laughs> it doesn't they get aren't through. even through they they can't relax and be like oh guys at least we made the top eight we made it's the actually, main event nope like if if alliance win this like without alliance winning this there is actually no tiebreakers there's no tiebreakers between the positions but if alliance do win this eg are in a tiebreaker up against dk and uh, Alliance could be in a tiebreaker with Mouse Balls. Actually, I take it back. If Mouse Balls win the game, then there's a tiebreaker. Then they could tie with uh, LGD. Yes, they so tie with LGD Radiant's as well as Newbie. They're both set, they're all 7-8. Uh, but yeah, back to this game. That mid-tier 2 tower for me is the major thing here for Alliance. If they bring that down and the side... Mouse did it already win, so we've already so got ourselves a, a tiebreaker. Uh, if they bring down that tier 2 tower in the middle lane, the potential for Radiant's relocating to take tier 3 falling. tower as well as mid-racked is so high. This is be all down to Zai. A big performance from Enigma. Here could end the game. Alliance! There's Storm, he's already jumped in! He starts over on EGM, they want to get rid of this Wisp, but Arteezy entangled up! Where is your black hole? There it is! S4 and Admiral Bulldog caught out! Wisp is on the sidelines, Bad Rider, S4's almost gone out, Universe! Triggers the arm and Admiral Bulldog dying in the midst of it! It's a double kill right now! Lord is trying to pick off Zai, but he's still got Ank! He's still got reincarnation. They bring more support in. Mason trying to battle up against Loader. Can they bring down the Chaos Knight? The Lone Draw Bear is in there. PPD's about to die. They got the Chaos Knight. Buyback by Wisp as well as CK. They're looking for kills on Arteezy. Mason, remember, no Aegis see more. He's got 19 Bloodstone charges. He'll respawn almost instantly. The top racks does remain intact for now. And EG are bailing themselves out after forcing four buybacks from Alliance. They lost nothing on that. They used they only used one black hole as well. The one Zai landed was perfect there. You know, I, this this strategy from EG is just and it's now, really a pleasure to watch uh, unfold right now. They're executing it so damn well. I think Alliance have no other choice. They they have to force a fight down middle lane. If they, they don't they, have fantastic, they, they can't do it. They. Uh, they, they, okay, then they wait 70 seconds, so they can't wait the full 5 minutes for all the buybacks to come off cooldown. They need that tier 2 tower gone, and they need to either force Mega Creeps, or they go for the back door. That's the other option they've got. They could go around the back of it all, and just push for the GG once Fantastic like off cooldown. Looks they might try to do just that, No, they want kills in middle. They like, need to catch Enigma. S4, where's your jump? Does Enigma or... Yeah, yeah, because there's no ulti from Universe. Enigma and Omni if they This can. is a really bad position for EG, they got Arteezy! He grabbed Arteezy, Loader's on the way in, Mason bashed up, there goes your black hole, it caught Loader out, EGM's kicking him up, Mason comes back down again looking for Loader, it's a split up fight, there's Mason as well, RK, a lot of nuke damage for Loader, now he finally gets himself away with a relocate after safety from EGM, PBD, low on life entangled, Mason chasing that Admiral Bulldog, no resummon on this bear, 20 seconds on the sideline for it, there's still S4 back behind enemy lines, Why he can't get he... back to his own base, EGM relocates back out again, but, but actually EG weren't waiting for him. He had such an easy target in actually either Omni Knight or Enigma, but chose to go for the Dragon Knight, and this could come back to bite them. Five seconds on Fantastic. Zeiss not in the fight, there's no there's black no hole. There's no black hole, you're right. They're going for the fight right now, taking out tier 4 towers. EG want to end this and get there's themselves the a six carry up. Yep, and look at Arteezy, he's getting melted down by Loader. EGM will give him the buff up, Mason will come in, but Admiral Bulldog focusing Universe down with the bear. EGM, he will get picked off here, but at the same time, there goes your rating. Admiral Bulldog, remember, this is his last bear for two minutes and PBD they've got it they've actually got Bulldog down for a full hundred seconds they're backing up Loader more Chaos Ballstones but Mason repel to try and protect him Universe low on life RK he's on the sidelines a pullback by Universe it was almost enough without reality but Mason focusing on Loader S4 he's got Blink Lat Dagger Lasso he could drag Mason back in again but the repel's making it impossible the Fortress being brought down Universe Loader gets the kill on him Zai you don't have enough physical damage Mason he's caught in the base he got brought down by the Fortress PBD and Zai BKB's going, where's those TPs coming oh, from? Oh, the black hole. hole! He got Loader! He got all of Alliance left! Alliance, over. they're out! There is no more! EG will take the Fortress, and they will eliminate the defending champions in the group stage from the International 2014. What a play by EG. What a last hole as well to finish it on. Brilliant display of Dota from EG. Brilliant, brilliant display of Dota. What a fantastic game. And even though Alliance get knocked out, that was just a beautiful game.